going to read chapter two of The Misadventures of Winnie the Witch. This one is called Winnie Goes Batty. Mmm, yummy in my tummy, said Winnie, licking her fingers. She was sitting on the doorstep and munching microwave turnip chips dipped in a snail sauce. To microwave a frozen chip, all you had to do was wave your wand ever so slightly and zap, the chips were cooked. It was very quick, scrummy, mmm, said Winnie, stuffing lots of chips into her mouth. Then bossy sister Wilma came round the corner. You do eat rubbish, Winnie, said Wilma, looking down her long nose. You're always eating fast food instead of good, well-cooked, homemade meals. I don't think you look after yourself properly, Winnie. How can you call snail sauce fast? asked Winnie. Anyway, I do cook lovely fresh food for Wilbur and for me. If you saw what I'm cooking for tea tonight, then you'd know. All right, I'll come to tea and see for myself, said Wilma. Oh, heck in a hat, said Winnie. Bother. Er, uh, that'd be lovely. See you later then, Wilma. Bye. Winnie hurried into the kitchen. Wilbur, she called. Where are you? Wilbur, you can come out now. She's gone, but she's coming back for tea, so we've got to cook up a feast. What shall we give her? Winnie looked through her recipes. Mmm, I think we'd have pickled anchovies. Have we got any pickled ants, Wilbur? Meow, said Wilbur, pointing at a jar. Good. Then we'll have squid and jelly. Is there squid in the fridge? Wilbur opened the fridge door and rummaged. Meow. Good. Then for main course, we'll have my special bat burger in a battered bun with roasted radish relish. Look in the battery, Wilbur. Check how many bats we've got. Take a look inside there. We might have Battenberg cake for afters, so we need plenty of bats. Wilbur opened the battery door. Meow, said Wilbur. Knotted noodles, you're blooming right, said Winnie, peering in. There's only one diddly little bat in there. The diddly, the diddly little bat cowered in a corner. Its diddly little batted knees knocked together. It looked at Winnie with its diddly batty eyes. Meow, asked Wilbur, ready to pounce. Squeak! went the diddly little bat. Uh, said Winnie. No, I don't think so, Wilbur. She reached out a finger to stroke the soft diddly little batty velvety head. This one's too scraggly and scrawny to serve up to Wilma. Anyway, we need a whole bag full of bats. We'd best go to the bat caves and get some plump, fresh ones to mash into burgers. So Winnie got a shopping bag and she and Wilma climbed onto the broom and off they flew. But Winnie was wriggling. Jiggle, jiggle, wriggle went the broom. Swerve went the broom. Meow, protested Wilma. Sorry, Wilma, said Winnie. I think that's been a very easy ride. Here we are, said Winnie. They parked the broom outside the bat cave and picked up batting nets. Abracadabra, went Winnie. Her wand began to glow brightly, lighting the cave, making shadows and showing bats clinging to the, all the walls. Squeak, 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 went the mass of bats. Pongy, wongy, woo, said Winnie, holding her nose. These bats smell good and lively. Wilbur licked his lips. Swat! He went with his net. Swish swat! Went Winnie. 
Got one, she said, but the diddly bat scrambled up Winnie's shoulder and squeaked in her ear. Squeak! Oh, said Winnie, that's that one's the diddly bat's mummy and he doesn't want her cooked into a burger. So Winnie, let that one go. Swish, swish, swap. She caught another. I've got a good fat one here, Wilbur. It's as fat as a flump dumpling. Hold the one light so I can see it properly. Then, oh, said Winnie, because the big fat bat was rubbing its eyes, this fat one's blooming well crying, said Winnie. Squeak, went a diddly bat. Frizzled fish cake, said Winnie. This Bat one's your grandpa. Are you related to every bat in the whole blooming cave? Squeak! Winnie put down her net. Oh, I give up. Come on, Wilbur. We'll have to cook something else. I'm not blooming well eating something that's related to any friends of mine. I shall make Wilma a nice warm worm salad or something. And that'll have to do. Come on. been a bit of a nightmare trying to get those bats, isn't it? They flew back home where they looked in the store cupboard. Aha! Bottled flies, said Winnie. They'll have to do, and there's a packet of sun-dried lice too. Get out the pans, Wilbur. She'll be here in five shakes of the cockroach bottom. Ring! Winnie! went the door, door yell. She's blooming here already and I haven't cooked a thing, said Winnie. Winnie opened the door and there stood Wilma with her nose in the air, sniffing. What can you smell? asked Winnie, a bit worried. Not a thing, said Wilma. You've not done any cooking at all, have you? Winnie, I knew you wouldn't. I was going to... Ha, huh, said snooty Wilma. Going to isn't the same as doing. Are we to starve? But just then a sizzle sound came from the kitchen and a wonderful smell curled round the corner and up Wilma's nose. Oh, she said as she stepped into the kitchen. Your scraggy old cat is doing the cooking, Winnie. Oh, and he's being helped by... Is that a bat? It is, said Winnie. That's my little diddly bat. And those are all his family, she said, pointing around the room where bats were being... Wilbur's little helpers, stirring and chopping and fetching. One bat settled like a great velvet bow in Winnie's hair. I see, said Wilma. So what are we going to eat? It does smell rather good. Winnie peered into the pans. Uh, it's fly fritters with lice sprinkles. Very nice said Wilma, and it was. And when Wilma had gone, Winnie looked around her batty room with all the bats all hanging up to sleep. Night, night. Mind the cats don't bite, said Winnie. She kissed a little diddly bat on the nose. Do you know? I think I'll join you. Winnie hung herself on the curtain pole so that she could sleep like a bat too. And so did Wilbur, at least until he fell off. Flump! And that was the end of that one. I hope you enjoyed that, well, chapter two with me today. I've still got a few more in the book that I would like to share with you. So if you join me again, maybe tomorrow, um, and there'll be another one to watch. Stay safe.